Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Church Chats. I have no idea what episode this is. I think it might be five. Yes. And our apologies for not having Church Chats last week because my phone no. went badonkadonk, like all the way badonkadonk, and went bye-bye. So I now have a new iPhone. Yeah. I did get a get I did get a get a good deal on it, three hundred and fifty dollars off of it, but it was still a financial blow. That's the reason I hesitated to do it for so long. But it's fun to be back to the iPhone since all my people have the iPhone, and hopefully this is a good video. Yes, and nice and clear, and see how beautiful we are. So we have been to church today. We got our Starbucks. Starbucks. I gotta get into the corner here. So. Cheers. Cheers. And Becky actually has not hers left. I know, right? She drinks hers fast. I save her mine. <laughs> but anyways, we just got back from church. We are headed to my school. And I'm quite sure that we'll be talking some about why we're heading to my school today when I start school tomorrow. Or I report back to school tomorrow. So the, the message was right on time. For both of us just as it always is and the series is called anxious for nothing and today's subtitle is praying through the pain and so you want to read the main verse yes it says you weren't created to exist in the consistent state of anxiety it drains your joy and leaves you stressed burned out and exhausted your purpose isn't living in fear Step boldly into the peace you'll find when you're anxious for nothing. Amen. And what's is it Philippians? It, no, this one is First Peter, Peter five six, and it says, "Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time." Right on. So Becky and I got into a big conversation while we were driving from church to Starbucks, and. Um, we do that every time, but we weren't ready to turn the camera on quite yet, no. but we did talk about it a lot, and for me, um, it's been a challenging summer for a number of reasons, and I told Becky that I think that I have been anxious for the entire summer. Um, all I've done is worry and fret, and worry and fret, and worry and fret, and 99% of it um, was my health issues, and my health has really been on a decline this summer because I was severely anemic. Also, my white blood cell count is down and there's not an explanation for it. And so I have I have seen one new doctor. I'm going to see two more new doctors, which for me is yeah, enough of an anxiety creator because that's just, um, and I even talked to the to the new doctor about it. I was like, after 20, a 20 year pursuit for an explanation for why my body doesn't work right, um, I go through phases where I have hope and I pursue health and I pursue wellness and all those things and that includes doctors and different medications or different therapies and whenever there's not a positive result from those things, um, it, it just, deflates me and fizzles out my hope and makes it where I don't want to try. And so I've been through a long phase of I don't want to try. Roller coasters. And so this summer with, you know, the severity of what was going on, I felt like, okay, I don't know so much that it was hope as it was desperation. Like I've got to pursue help again. And so um, because of the low white blood cell count, they're sending me to a hematologist. Um, and with the explanation that it could be lymphoma, it could be leukemia, um, there could be a bleed somewhere in my body. Well, if that were you, what would that create? <laughs> it creates anxiety in me in a big way because I've told many people this before, when I feel okay, fearful thoughts about something might be seriously wrong with me, something that might kill me, those thoughts don't take over, but when I'm feeling super bad and super tired and sick and nauseous and all those things, um, then those thoughts happen because I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Maybe I do have cancer. Maybe there is something really wrong with me. Um, 
And it's not that I want there to be something wrong with me, but I want there to be a reason for why I feel this way. And so I had to back up off of my uh, fasting. I had to add some carb, carbohydrate type foods back into my body for, um, I had to stop fasting because I had to eat full meals with the iron I was taking because it was making me so horribly nauseous and sick. And I had an episode where I almost passed out and along with that is some of my weight coming back. And I'm not talking about a lot of it, but you know, five, 10 pounds that was really hard to get off that coming back. What is that causing me? <laughs> Anxiety. So like my entire summer has just been fretful, fearful, anxious thoughts. Um, and we'll get into the not being able to do everything, talk here in a little bit, but I want to give Becky a chance to um, talk about what, what we were talking about. For me, it's like, work it's like looking over my life and how my life is changing and the roles is kind of the same you know um it's a day-to-day -day, like in for me in my business right now it's a transitional time because um i'm having kids graduate you know i i raise them up from babies and now they're four and five years old you know so it's time for them to the parents aren't meeting them. They're going into school now. And so that means um, I'm having to let go of these precious little ones that I've had for all these years. And also, like, there is also uh, a family that I've had for 12 years. And this is their last baby. And I'm having to let go. And it's really... Um, I look back and I was like, wow, you know, four kids for this family and it's been 12 years and oh, that's a lot. That's a long it's time. It's so sad, you know, it makes me sad, but I'm so happy for them and I hope that, um, and I know they'll do good and I know they'll come back and I know that they'll, you know, but it's just a big transition in my life right now where um, kids are graduating and going off and I have to start all over with new babies which I can't wait to see what God does with that, you know, with that. But, um, but also, you know, going from being able to be more involved in their family off of work hours has, um, not been as much in the last couple years because I'm taking the role on as helping my mom, you know, and getting what she needs with her health decline and stuff. And so, um, it's just a lot, you know, it's like, am I going to be able to keep up the business? Am I giving the kids the quality care that I used to give to them or are, you know, and so I'm second guessing myself and, uh, that gives me anxiety. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's basically where I'm at and along with transitioning over from older kids to young kids that means I have to rearrange my whole house um, I have to move uh, different toys and stuff out um, equipment that babies will need and not you know bigger kids um, so it's a lot of work a lot of after hour uh, work like preparation preparation work, work. and uh, the way I think about I have to get a different mindset of um, lesson plans and what to do and activities. And it's just, you know, it's just the way of life. So it's, and as you get older, I'm just saying, I've been doing this out of my house for 20 years. And um, as I'm getting older, it takes more time and more brain power than it used to. Yeah. Like, um, physically, my body's not allowing me to just jump up, do this, do this, do this. You know, I have to ease into it. And, and pace yourself. Pace myself. And it's just, um, it takes a lot longer. Um, so, yeah. Getting old is no fun. Just saying. <laughs> it's not. It's not fun. And so, I think that, I mean, the majority of my summer, I've just been super anxious. And I haven't been able to make decisions. 
and I, I go back and forth with things and a lot of it is and I was I, I use my my other Starbucks cup as an example I told Becky I said if this is a, a body that's at full capacity starting at the top most people start with their energy reserve at the top and I start with my energy reserve down here and so I do a few things I suck some of that energy down I do a few things and then by midday my energy has gone and in order for me to do anything else that day physically I have to have a nap and then I have a nap and then I get a little bit back and at that point I've lost all motivation it's like I've had to train myself to do anything that has to be done early in the morning or it doesn't get done but I beat myself up over that because I want a clean home I want all my laundry done I don't want there to be dishes in the sink I want you know to be ahead of the game with my editing for YouTube and every other summer prior to this one my classroom was done weeks ago and my classroom is not done even slightly and I report back to work tomorrow and so the fact that I've had a few days here and there when I could have gone to the school and I didn't have like the time that I didn't go because I wasn't feeling well the whole day I'm sitting there beating myself up and being anxious about how things aren't getting done and worrying about it and not resting and not really my mind not resting for sure but having tension and, and anxiety and stress in my body because I'm feeling guilty and bad and nervous and worried about the fact that I'm not going and taking care of business so when I get there and the time comes I'm going to be in a, in a crunch and I'm not going to be able to get it all done. And you know, it's like I, I let it almost ruin my day yesterday with my family because I needed to go to the school, but I didn't go because things didn't work out because their schedules changed. And I finally just had to let it go and just say, Sherry, stop, you know, enjoy your time with your family. The rest of it's going to be okay. But um, I told Becky, I said, I feel like I haven't been reading my Bible like I should. I haven't been praying like I should. I haven't even been talking to the Lord I've been so enraptured with all the things take that back she has read her Bible she hasn't internalized it. <laughs> I haven't she internalized it yeah it's just been a going through the motions kind of thing right. and and it's the difference you know having read your scripture but then really internalizing and, and applying it to your life is yeah way different and so I told her, I said, I went to a new doctor and I was there 10 minutes early when I realized that my card wasn't, my health card wasn't with me, my insurance card. I went back to my house and I was, you know, frantically looking through things, trying to find it. And I'm like, please, Jesus, help me find this. Lord, help me. And I told her, I said, it made me so sad because I felt like that was the first time that I had called on God in the longest time. And I'm like, maybe the fact that I'm fretting and worrying and anxiety ridden is because I haven't been doing those things, you know? And so let's let's get back into some of what what the message said. Well, Pastor Craig was talking about how he's a tither and how not just tithing financially, but also tithing with your spirit and putting God first for with the your time. first time percent time of the morning you know first 10 minutes of the morning or whatever and praying praying about your day and it says and he read Philippians 4 4 through 7 and it says rejoice in the Lord always I will say again rejoice let your gentleness be evident in all the Lord is near do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the God, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ and I love that he was talking about he showed a list of all his sermons and he said it takes him 12 to 16 hours to prepare a weekly sermon and he had a list of probably 15 and he said it takes him that much time to do that and he needs like what did he say 20 days yeah. 20 work days to get all those done and he had 11 and he was getting so anxious and, and worried about not being able to do it and not you know putting his best and all those things and he said 
that he was seeing seeing a therapist about it and that he was having to learn how to make adjustments to the changes and and he was talking about instead of worrying about was he going to have enough time to do it he said he was cheating i have to bring this up because it really made me think about myself and that is he said he was cheating with time in the morning and he was cheating with time in the evening he wasn't giving up his time with his family and robbing his family at that time but he was getting he was getting to, to the church at 3 34 in the morning and if he got there at five he was sleeping in and he was staying up way late to prepare and he said instead of doing that he decided to take 10 percent of that time and dedicate that to prayer and surrender that up to god and trust that with the 90 left, with, with what was left, he was going to be able to get all those sermons done without cheating t himself of the time. And I told Becky, I was like, for the last two years, I've gotten up at four o'clock in the morning because I have to have time to get my mind straight, to get my body moving, all those things. But this is me going to bed at like 10 30, 11, 12 at night, and and by me not having an extra hour of sleep then I rob myself of another hour in the day where I have no energy and it's like I don't know how to find a balance with that I don't know how to take this giant list of responsibilities and this giant list of, of have to things I don't know how to have that and ration or pace myself or ration out the energy which is so little right now I don't know how to do it all and I don't know how to give myself permission to not do it all right and I told her I said I look around my house and I can't stand the fact that my house is not clean I can't stand the fact that people when the door opens I'm embarrassed like I can't stand that feeling I don't want it to be that way but I don't have the physical energy stamina to do it all and so I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> I, I mean, I straight up don't know what to do with that. And then here comes a massive wave of anxiety because now you're going to add an eight hour day with 25 kids into the mix. And I am fully overwhelmed, fully, like to the point where I could cry right now overwhelmed because we're heading to my classroom on a Sunday afternoon because I don't have anything done. So pray for us. So pray for me, because I'm having a nervous breakdown right now. But we're going to get it done. We're going to get a lot done where she will feel... Well, uh, Becky graciously is giving up time that she probably needs for other things to okay. come with me today. I mean, that's what friends and sisters are for. Um, and I would do the same for her, obviously. Absolutely. But it's like, you know, this is not the way I want to start. I'll just put it that way. But after the message, we'll get it done, we'll pray about it, and it'll be awesome. This week, also for me, is a lot. It's back to school. She starts school, but we we don't start school until a week from to, uh, this coming up week. But, so this is our last week at daycare where we have a sleepover, and it's a back to school bash, so I have to prepare and uh, get ready for that because I usually have former students come like to come spend the night with me and stuff like that and um, we have the uh, back to school bash so for that I have to order dinner and I have to have breakfast ready and I have like probably 30 kids to spend the night I have to rearrange my whole living room to get them all settled in and I have to entertain them and we have lots of fun kids look forward to it every year it's like after it's over it's like when do we get to spend the night with you again next year I, said, I mean next next time and I said well next year we'll do it again and um so anyways that being said um Pastor Craig said you don't always have the power to control but you always have the power to surrender yeah. so well let's talk about that cycle thing it says yes. that you feel anxious you feel anxious so you attempt to control then that fear you fear losing control and then you attempt to control again and then you feel anxious yeah you know? and so it's like this cycle that just keeps on going but if you have to understand that you you don't always have control you can 
control some things, but you cannot control everything. And so whenever you always surrender what you can't control to God. Yeah, the power and, if it's, God. and then also that thing where he said, if it's big enough to worry about, it's yeah. big enough to pray about. Yes. But at the end of it, they played a song. And, and and you just said, have your hands up, put your hands up, and just surrender it to it. And it was like, whatever. And I was like, that's what I need to do with this situation at, at school. Like, okay, God, right now, like, I am surrendering this to you. Yes. Help us get through it. Help me get it all done. <coughs> Excuse me. Help me just to get through it. You know, to do what I need to do. Give me the energy to do it. Help me have the stamina to do it. Yes where I'm going to feel when we leave here today, I'm going to feel some of that relief yes, because some of that shoulders. weight is off of my shoulders and it's going to be okay. Like I need to feel like it's okay when we leave yes. there today. And we've already said we're leaving at five o'clock. That gives yes. us literally three hours. We're leaving yes. by five o'clock. So, and we have a game plan, Yes, but we're, no surre <laughs> we're <laughs> surrendering <laughs> it to God. But that's what, you know, I, I am a self-proclaimed control freak. Like, if I can't control it, I don't like that. I try to have control of it. And that's probably the reason why my whole health situation is so, you know, creating anxiety for me. Because I have zero control over what's happening in my body. And the things that I can control, I'm doing. And it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be helping. Right. It seems like things are getting worse. And, and. So it's just a cycle, yep. one thing to the next, and it just kind of spirals. And, and I'm just trying to learn how to keep myself out of that constant fret and worry. And I, we were talking about it earlier, how we feel like so often we like have felt like we had a grip on that. Yeah. And how it just creeps back in, you know. And, and I didn't realize how circumstantial that is. It yeah. really is. Your circumstances can come in throw a monkey wrench into your thought life and you don't even realize that you're full on into it until you are full on into it and I am admitting right here I am full on into it and I am I am gonna be really trying hard to pray to surrender it to not try to have control over it I'm gonna try really hard to get control of my thought life by surrendering Yes. <laughs> by surrendering um, but we are at my humble abode of employment and there's not another soul here which is a good thing because that means we will be uninterrupted so one more prayer that I can get through the building to where the laminator is so that I can get the monopoly man that holds the cane laminated and put on my door it's going to be good I'm proclaiming it in Jesus' name. It's going to be good. Yes. When we leave here today, I'm going to feel like <gasps> I can take a deep breath. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to be back. It's You guys didn't realize that you were going to be my therapist today, did you? right. And in the comments, what what are you anxious about? What are some things that are that you feel anxious about? Can you, you know? relate to can anything relate that to we're us? saying? Yeah. Um, and, and hopefully... If you are in that place like we are, maybe this helped give you some tools to let go of some of that too. And if you need to, put it in the comment section. This is what I'm letting go of. This is what I'm surrendering to God right now. And we'll pray about it with you. Yes. I mean, we'll pray about it with you. We will pray for you. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Have a great week and we'll see you in two more weeks. Yes. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.